BRB UK. Worst teeth, better accents. Hello, hello, and indeed, ahoy, hoy. I was slightly thrown off by a slower tempo intro there. It slightly confused me. I got confused. I'm also confused. I'm very confused. Nurse, it's time for my medication. My name is Dan, and I need my pills. Hello, it's episode 492 of BRB UK. Why am I all of a kerfuffle, I hear you ask? Well, not only did we forget to hawk you some t-shirts at the top of this show, nah. as we recorded, we're also doing things slightly differently for the next two weeks, because Coleman, say hello, Coleman. Hi. He He's going on a holiday with his super secret burger garage people. Because uh, that's where he works. He's definitely not a secret agent. He's, defi- he's definitely not going... the Bahamas going... on a very nope. important mystery. He's Go. definitely not going to a place with, like, a lair or, like, sharks with laser beams or some kind of secret agent degenitalizing machine. None of those things are what he's no, doing. just going uh, to with my girlfriend. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Um, fine. Be like that. Trying to try to create a narrative around it for you, but you're clearly not interested. Tim, hello. You're a man who will create a narrative around bloody anything. How are you doing? Yeah, all right, all right, all yeah. good. Looking good. forward to the Queen's birthday and having some time off work and some time it's off podcasting. Birthday, it's not her birthday. Oh, it's, it's her jubilee thing. It, it's, it's actually her birthday next on... week as well, but still. Well, that's just frankly showing up. I mean, it's it's old lady is sat on an old chair for a really freaking long time. The a diamond encrusted yeah, chair. So there we go. Where, wearing a fancy yeah. hat. So, uh, so yes, and it makes Prince Charles officially the longest work experience candidate. Known to man. <laughs> so, uh, well done. So, we're doing things a little bit differently. They're going to be one short show this week, one short show next week. But we're not going to let you go without us for a single week because we're nice like that. Or rather, Coleman's nice like that. So this show, episode 492, we are going to sum up what we think are games of the year so far. Candidates. Mm -hmm. So far. So far. So Mm. near so far. Indeed. So uh, games of the year. So... um, should we let Tim go first? Because Blakeney is going to take the longest and then me and you can just fit in. Now, around. Tim, you yes. got eight minutes. Remember eight that? Minutes. Eight minutes. Right. Well, are are we, one minute we, more are, and I'll hang up we... on you. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> we're, ha- we're, we're being strict. Okay. Well, I, I think I've got the most and obvious. And go. Anyone that's listened to the show is probably going to guess what my top three picks will be, even though one of them is a bit more of uh, out of left field than most possibly but i'll get the two most obvious ones out of the way although one of them might take a bit of explaining considering but elden rings at the very top and that is the definite top one that shocks me that will probably well almost certainly remain on my list of top three until the end of the year although i have lost a bit of steam recently i haven't been able to get much gaming time on that i did play many motorways last week so i I did that joke but i thought I, i have more respect for myself than that (laughs) <laughs> so I, I didn't none. actually get much time in the last couple of weeks to actually delve into Elden Ring. But yeah, that's still generally really enjoying it. I am at the point where I'm a bit like, not another bloody catacomb or not another dungeon thing. I I, I, I can... You might be playing the wrong game if you if those are the kind of things you get fed up with, Tim. Well, no, but as in, I think uh, some of Next this... Next you'll be saying you don't well, like difficulty spikes. No, but up You're to You're going to be now, terribly disappointed. Up to this point, I've been like consuming all side content that I can, and I think I'm getting to the point where I just need to mainline through the sort of quest and story parts to actually get to the conclusion so that I've got some things afresh for New Game Plus, basically. But generally, still really enjoying it. It's still a great game. I would still think, and I'm not sure we've uh, necessarily talked about this, although maybe we might coming up. Yeah, I think it kind of embarrasses Ubisoft for me. It's another thing that made me realise that... But Ubisoft do that all by themselves. Well, they can yeah. do that all by themselves and through their employment practices and otherwise. But also, like, Ubisoft have literally built a... a uh, a model with their studio of crafting open world games via like getting lots of studios around the world to kind of combine on one big project. And I thought that was Voltron. <laughs> but it kind of shows for me like if 
I, I got very bored of open world games, and I think actually I got very bored of Ubisoft open world games, or or Ubisoft is stuck on one thing and not really advanced much further because a lot of my favorite games these days are arguably open world games like Elden Ring, God of War, Ghost of Tsushima. They're like three of my top three games of all time, and they're all arguably like open world games that are better than anything that I've played in Ubisoft the last few years. So just thought that was uh, yeah, quite an interesting thing that I was knowing the other day. I have a question. Yes? How have you just spent a third of your time allocated for three games and that one of them being Elder Ring by talking about games that are nothing to do with Elder Ring? Because I've Ring. spoken about Elden Ring quite a lot on the show and I was covering we have spoken about Elden where I am now I'm talking about. Yeah, so I, I thought I'd talk As a bit every differently. gaming podcast. And was about in, to in move existence. on to Gran Turismo 7. I th- I'm I'm a car nut. I love I love me a racing game, Tim, and I this is nowhere near. I'm a light nut. Free. I'm surprised this isn't on your list, considering you haven't bothered to complete your list. But you know, <laughs> well, I well because uh, I don't want to commit to it. I well, mean, f- hey, for me, throw me under the bus. <laughs> yeah, well, throwing you under the car in this case, but yeah. <laughs> For me, it's only it's possibly only on there temporarily. It has been one of the big tentpole releases. It has possibly been one of my most played games of the year so far. And although I'm not expecting it to necessarily stay on my game of the year list at come the end of the year, it's I think it's probably on there for now just by virtue of the fact that it's the game that I've played the most. I have enjoyed playing it. I have a massive problem with the economy and I think it would get me playing more and I would enjoy it more if it wasn't for that slightly broken microtransaction inducing economy. But the game itself, I I really like and and play quite well. The the one thing is I've stopped playing uh, again since I've been busy at work and stuff. I haven't had much time. I've stopped doing the daily challenges where I was doing 26 miles a day to get the roulette thing on that, basically. But I've, like drifted away f- I, yeah, I've drifted away from it a little bit, but at the same time, I still quite like what's there and I need to go back and do the Porsche race I'm doing on the Nürburgring and stuff like that. Um, and yeah, like, right, I, Let me tell you why it's nowhere near my list, Tim, right, before you because, crack on. Because I'm your list of you three why. only has two games in it. Well, there's that. And also, I, uh, you're wrong and I'm right. Um, so, Good. the thing is, with Gran Turismo 7, it seems to, the longer the game's been out, the worse they've managed to make it in a couple of ways, which is a bit of an unusual tactic. Yeah. So, I mean, there are some aspects of it where it is, I find the way in which it's clearly pushing you for microtransactions really abhorrent. Like, with the roulette thing like you just mentioned, I can tell you, as soon as that appears on the screen, what prize I'm going to get. And that prize is the smallest pile of coins that there is on display. Yeah. That's essentially what it is. Um, they also, I just think it, there are bits of it that feel really great, and the car handling somehow feels worse now than it did at the beginning. Really? Uh, I really like the way the cars handle. Yeah, just doesn't, something doesn't feel quite right about it. And... Uh, to, 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 to me, it feels really anachronistic in some aspects of its design. I think if they could just be bothered to modernise it and, you know, frankly, remove their head from their own asses, I think they could make a much better game. I really genuinely do. I think if I was reviewing it five years ago, I'd say, wow, this is an incredible, brilliant game. But now I kind of feel GT7, you're a perfectly passable racing game. But frankly, there's so much stuff that I think they're mi- they're, they're, they haven't nailed the hit on that I personally wouldn't put it up there, which is a shame because I've only played three games this year and that's why my list is only two, two items long. Well, I can't believe I went through such a steep decline of the excitement for this game because when they first initially showed this off at the PlayStation 5 reveal, I was like, wow, that looks amazing. I can't wait to give this one a try. And then upon its release and Tim reviewing it, like that just put me off the entire game. Like everything you're describing makes me not want to play this game. And don't get me wrong, when it comes to shameless microtransactions, I love GTA Online and I love uh, the Avengers, Marvel's Avengers. And GT Seven made me feel like sick listening to the 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 level of. It's not just the mo- the the microtransaction laden shenanigans going on, but the 
the whole way that it sounds like a mobile, a seventy pound mobile game. It's insane the the, the yeah. level of uh, trickery they've thrown in there. Sorry to jump on your uh, on, on no, your, no, no, that, your game. That's fine. As I said, it's it's kind of on there by default at the moment, but I don't expect it to stay there. I expect it to get lapped by some other games coming up in the future as well. So uh, I see what you did there. <laughs> or overtake two great words in the English possibly. language. Default. Yeah. So look, yeah, I, I'm not totally in love with the game. I'm not going to massively leap to its defense, especially because no, its economy doesn't all. deserve it. But it's still, it's one of my most played games so far this year. It's one of the games I've enjoyed the most this year. Therefore, it's on my top three. So I got yeah. one. If, yep. if you love it, then you should put a Nuremberg ring on it. <laughs> oh, nice. I kind of like that. Yep, yep. Yeah. Lovely. One that is on there and may stay on there and will take some more ousting to actually get out of my list is a little game called Castle Morahisa. Now, I was given a review code Bless for you. this, just to point that out. But, um, yeah, it's, and it's, it's one of those games where describing it won't really convey how much I think of it because it's got oh, a lot of buzzwords in it that make it sound very much like another one of those but it's a roguelike right. deck building uh, card game which I just really Bingo. really love basically I'm, I really like the way and yeah it was kind of um, uh, feudal Japan themed so it's got like samurai classes in it and other classes um, samurai rise. I, I I talked about it on the show and I talked about it for review, but it also went a lot deeper. Like every time that you complete the full run with one of the characters, it unlocks another harder mode. And I keep on getting to the end of that harder mode and unlocking another harder. Like it just makes it slightly different Harderer. every time, basically. Yeah. Um. So there's even more game there than I realized to start with. And I continue to really like it. Um. I've only fallen off it a bit because I'm, dedicating as much of my time to Elden Ring or to review stuff in the last few weeks. But yeah, still really like that game and really highly recommend it. It's definitely worth picking up. If you see it on sale, which I'm guessing it might be at the moment, then definitely pick it up. But I still think it's worth full price because there's quite a lot of game there. Um, If the general game appeals to you, then yeah, it's definitely worth going for. So grab that at some point. Good. And I was playing on the Switch, I was just going to mention, but yeah. And I think it's show off. Yeah, yeah. Good. <laughs> right. Mine are quick. Uh, my quick. first, pretty well, quick. Two right. thirds um, is quick. My first, well, I shall, I shall subtract the two minutes of, of Tim's time that I stole. How's that for a deal? <laughs> All right. My first, which I think stands a bloody good chance of remaining in that position for the whole year, yes. is Tunic. Tunic, Tunic, Tunic. Great game, fantastic love letter to Zelda with like super deep backstory that takes you completely by surprise. Wonderful world building, a really fantastic way of getting the narrative across to you and makes you get a bit of pen and paper out as well, incredibly, to solve all the puzzles. I still haven't solved everything in the game. There's so much in there. It's great. It's fantastic. It's genuinely one of the, the best experiences I've had exploring a game world. It's just amazing it Get does tuning. make me think it's brilliant the, the more we've spoken because i think we've spoken about like two or three shows now the more i think about tunic and its kind of lineage of uh, uh, obvious obvious influences from zelda it makes me think i could totally do like a, a souls like zelda game i think i'd be up for that all the same you know characters settings all that kind of stuff of of, of legend of zelda but just a pure souls like <laughs> Especially now we've had an Elden Ring and that open world kind of, you know, Breath of the Wild, but more stuff in it. Yeah, I could totally do that. I, but I think one of the really nice things about Tunic is that it doesn't overstay its welcome yeah. as well. It's just a really well-judged bit of entertainment. And that's all I can say about it. It's brilliant. I mean, it's also Someone like says, Fox. why is it brilliant? Is it coming well, to yeah, Switch? Because we, we spoke about this before. I, I believe I said I'd double dip uh-huh. on this one. If I think. It don't remember seeing it announced for Switch. Might be. It's timed exclusive at the moment on a uh, time console exclusive on the Xbox Series and Xbox One. That's not to sh- that's not to say it won't, but at the moment it would seem unlikely. 
There's uh, yeah, there's there's no confirmation if it will or won't. I guess no. um, yeah, it would be a Game Pass handheld type thing because I just really want to play this on the go. But unfortunately, Game Pass it, there is a bit of I finally sorted out Game Pass working on my phone without any kind of disconnect or connection or latency or stuff. Turns out uh, Chrome uh, what what they call uh, Pixel phones. They, uh, when you install Game Pass, it goes, hey, uh, I'm going to limit the data on this app by default. And uh, if I feel that it's been running too long, I'm just going to shut it off. And that's been what's causing me all the problems. So Really? So yeah. basically, it's a, uh, it's a sneaky way of going, well, that doesn't appear to be Stadia and they're streaming a game. Tell you what. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure it's quite like that, but I, I, I basically really? have to go in the advanced settings and Isn't make it? sure that it was and, uh, unlimited to uh, yeah, any kind of consumption and, and it's fine. Yeah, turn off throttle all Stadia competitors, yeah? Just turn that <laughs> off. Yeah. Yeah, something along those lines. But anyway, the, the problem is there is there is still the odd ju- mm. jitter or latency that can pop up and Tunic is not the game to be playing with those kind of yeah. uh, Ooh, I restrictions. do hate me some jitter. I do mm. dislike me some jitter okay. in, my, in my latency. It does Forza um, all right, though. Forza yeah. on the go. Oh. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, shall I do my next one? And yes, it's a please. potential, this one. I spo- only spoke about it last week, but oh, it has really got its claws into me. Vampire Survivors. I've now started to understand some of the surprisingly deep gameplay mechanics in there. For a game that is just all you can do is control your character while they throw stuff at bad guys, there's a lot of depth in that game. A lot yeah. of really subtle kind of meta things in it that you know kind of if you if you have certain items and level them up in combination with another that unlocks another item which in turn unlocks more stuff and there are then ways in which stuff kind of interacts with each other it's incredible it's really really good two quid to be fair the fact that it's two quid and that good is why it's on my potential list okay i'm not yeah it's why is it too look person who's making vampire survivors charge more than two quid <laughs> seriously it's um yeah, he's undervalued. Vampires, it? yeah he's undervalued it's surprisingly not there's more things other than vampires in there <gasps> zombies yes there are zombies so you made a game with money. zombies in it yes they did make a make made, made a game one one with zombies in it one 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 exclamation mark Good. um there's also milk elementals which just sounds wrong mm. definitely yeah. Ang- angry angry man cows as well, or bulls, as is people mil- like to call them. Milk uh, they're also in there. <laughs> what? Exactly. What is okay, milk, milk an elemental. element? Is that what you think? Air? Yeah. Yeah. Element. element. Too big. <laughs> Carefully. That's what you do. do you Make not sure it's a lady elephant. elephant for a start. Yeah, that's the problem. Uh, yeah. What, 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 this is what why we're making sure it's a lady elephant. Zoo. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> So yeah, so that's, anyway, that's my second one, but potentially, <laughs> um, I, um, I suppose if I absolutely <laughs> had to put a third, if you say in Destiny there, Two, I'm going to slap you so hard. Anyway, so I'm only allowed two this year. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm surprised. So, um, uh, I'm surprised Shipbreaker hasn't appeared on there. Well, I technically that was early access last year and i think okay I did but the put it the in full release is this year and it's releasing oh, on game true. pass as well i oh. haven't played it for a while but i did like it very very much so tell you mm. what i'm going to go and play it and let you know if the 1.0 is any better i think it's come out on game, game pass, pass as yeah, well but i think um, that's just so, game pass pc oh okay well, i think i so. shall have a look I shall go and go and play it some more and return with a verdict. Yeah, I'm looking forward. That's been on my wish list since you recommended it's it. It's a corking so game. I've been looking forward corking to game. it. Like, I was literally, it, it got put on sale the other day and I, I was thinking, oh, I'm going to pick that up. I'll, I'll remember to do that. And then I was watching some video where they're talking about games that are coming out and they mentioned that Shipbreak is coming to Game Pass. Went, oh, that saved me a bit of money. Okay. We'll do <laughs> yeah. that instead. Happy days. I was just going to mention while we're talking about purchases that I bought fracked this week and that might be a game to get on my oh the uh, psvr game yes because i plan to dig out my psvr and and go that but that's on sale at the moment um so and as is behind you on the shelf mate as is i expect you to die too which i might pick up if i do oh i expect you to die was really good fun so the sequel's on sale as well so i might pick up that but i'm I'm gonna play fracked and if i play fracked then i'll buy myself (laughs) The, the next one i'm not going to play you, buy you have to mes- message me to let me know how fract is because if that's good i'll buy it while it's on sale 
Uh, it's only on sale for today, so it's useless oh, for our I'm... listeners, but good for you. It, uh, the reason why I bought it today is because it ran out today, so that's why I mentioned it to you. Okay. So, yeah. Well, unless you're playing it tonight and you're going to message me before the stroke of midnight when it gets taken off the, the store, then... Uh... I mean, sort of Frack looks price. good, but it looks like it would make you vomit all over the place, cool, man. That's why. That's why I've got uh, travel sickness tablets there. <laughs> there is a demo. Uh, there we go. There that's is why a demo. I have a VR bucket. <laughs> uh, okay. But, yeah. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. I might wait till PSVR two and use backwards compatibility. I think it's only there. eleven pounds as well, by the way. But yeah, you're eleven pounds. Mm-hmm. Tell us about your games, Cole, Tell us about your games Oh yes, Cole. sorry. Uh, this one's been difficult. I have been switching out games. Uh, there's one out of my three that is definitely solid, I reckon, at this point. Um, but the other two I keep switching out because so there's so sorry. many good games I've played this year so far. Uh, but the first one, I, I I wanted to get a bit of a difference. So I went for a Switch game uh, to begin with, and it was either gonna be, it was going to be Pokemon. It ended up being Kirby and the Forgotten Land just because I think whereas uh, Pokemon's the big open world type game and you go out and you're hunting Pokemons, uh, it looks really dated. Kirby in the Forgotten Land, gorgeous game, more linear, perfect for a handheld style, just what I want. It's If you're a fan of uh, the Mario Odyssey game that came to Switch, then this is pretty much up your street, I reckon. It, it, it's that same kind of principle. Instead of switching out hats to get different powers and, and, and things in the game, it's Kirby. You absorb people, yes, you absorb uh, stuff. enemies and, and, and take their powers and then you can store those costumes for later and upgrade them and stuff. And plus there's the whole mouthful mode and you can partly swallow a car and drive around in the car or swallow a vending machine and shoot out soda cans at enemies and all these cute power-ups that are thrown in there. Uh, it's it's really worth running through. And that game, as you progress in that game, the difficulty spike at some point just goes nuts and it becomes a really decent challenge. But it's such a good game. Uh, I recommend that one. So anyone that has a Switch, this should be on. you should be picking this up this year, I think. Uh, the other one which surprised the hell out of me is uh, Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga, which we spoke about uh, a couple of shows ago. I love the idea of the Lego games, especially when they first released and they kind of did that Marcel Marcel role where uh, all the characters didn't speak and got mime along and did little noises and stuff. Uh, when you have to interpret an existing story in that way, I, I uh, this kind of Mr. Bean style, I really liked that. And then when they just started... I see, now, now there's your cultural set point right there. You <laughs> showed Bean. off with your Marcel Marceau. <laughs> no, Mr. Bean, mate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then when they pivoted and went, okay, we're going to make our own stories and get in new voice actors and stuff, I thought that was a really good step as well. Like Lego uh, Marvel Avengers, the, the, the first game, I, I absolutely loved that game. Um, sorry, Lego Marvel Super Heroes. Then when they went, okay, we're just going to take the films and pull out the sound clips and stuff, and it sounded really tinny and it played... You know, that that point the gameplay was very stale that's where it kind of lost its luster for me so there's only one lego game that i've really liked and it's lego marvel superheroes now they're they're going okay we're going to recreate the movies but add stuff to it and we're getting brand new voice actors in mixed with the original actors and and we're not just pulling out stock audio and stuff and it, it's shown that the work has put in for this game, unfortunately to the detriment of the staff where, you know, there has been heavy crunch uh, that has been uh, levied against uh, TT Games. So there is a good side and a bad side, but it is a, a fantastic game. And if you're ever going to try a Lego game or, uh, if you, you know, if you are into Lego games and you fell off on them, I think this is the one to get back into them. This is not a, we've taken the Lego Star Wars 1 and 2 plus the Force Awakens which we spoke about on the show before and then bundled them into a new repackaged shiny thing it's like they're brand new games they've completely redone these they're no longer like the kiddie little platformer brawler things they're third person shooters brawlers uh, platformers flight simulators driver like it's so much stuff thrown in it's a vastly enjoyable game I I really 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 like like this one coming your way soon Tim once I've uh, finished with it Yes, yeah, I'm kind of looking forward to it. Possibly the only reason I haven't picked it up um, is the fact that you mentioned that I might be able to borrow yours. But um, yeah, it, it strikes me just while you were saying that just then that they've taken the approach that we used to have for like movie tie-in games. So you used to get a movie tie-in game that was a blending of genres and had different sections like a, a shooting section and a first-person section and different things that yeah. that mimicked the film. 
And it seems like they've just done a very good job of doing that, basically. So, yeah, that seems like a good thing. More so than that, it reminds me of kind of, uh, I don't know if it was the same on regular consoles, but on the Amiga days, if a game came out, say like uh, Terminator came, you, you were, oh, it's a Terminator 2 game, I want to play this. And you boot it up and it's like a side-scrolling brawler. And then you get to the next level and then it's a racer. And then you get next level and it's a light gun shooter. And they just keep changing the game. Uh, yeah. that, that's what this is. But it's that, but done well. So, right, yeah. <laughs> Robocop, it's a driving simulator and a flight simulator and a, a first-person shooter. And none of it good. Yeah, I remember the original Batman game being like that as well. <laughs> like... The, yeah, oh, great. the Amiga Batman. Oh, the Amiga. I used to love. Yeah, well, I hate I the driving to sections well. where you'd have to. Driving sections, I got, yeah. I like the Batwing sections best. Batwing was where it was. Uh, oh, see, I like the sections yeah, where you had to do the, the makeup thing and find the Batwing's Joker's good. secret and all that sort of thing. Use the Bat computer. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Love that joke. That was good. Yeah. Right. WWE 2K22. I think that's obvious. Ooh. I was going to pick this. And it's. it's no, really, it really isn't the kind of I'm biased because I love wrestling. It, it you know, and I'm, I'm just uh, no, it totally is. It the really is. No, cool. this is because no, because this is, is the best the WWE let me have games too. have I'm been. Gonna, I'm for, gonna, I'm, I'm gonna, gonna pick this hill to die, mate. Pair, I'm gonna get on that Elizabeth <laughs> line. I'm gonna come down the slough. <laughs> Really? Good, because it because it stops at Paddington. You can't go all the way. Ah, uh, nah, bollocks. So not going to West slow yet. It goes to slow, doesn't no. it? No. No, we need to put another 50p in the meter, to make. Uh, yeah, it's not okay. running. It's not running Fine. the full length yet. I'm gonna get it's the bus. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get three different life, buses Tim, but- to slough, <laughs> and I'm gonna slap the pattern off that ridiculous shirt you're wearing. Hey, look! <laughs> you, stop having a go at my. Uh, stop having a go at my midlife crisis shirt. I'm just trying to channel my inner Top Gear presenter. All right, Lawrence Loyal and Bone called. He Dick said, head. "Actually, you know what? Keep you're, it." Yeah, you're in a Top Shop, more like. <laughs> <laughs> Wowza! <laughs> wow! <laughs> Thanks, guys. Yeah, that's all right, all right buddy. <laughs> Carry on. Where was I? Uh, oh yeah, I have no idea. Um, yeah, so that's where I was. WWE Two K Twenty Two, and the reason I wanted to pick this is, uh, I mean, I, I've spoke about this in depth when um, when we were talking about this previously, and I went in and made all our characters and stuff. Uh, it's just a really enjoyable game. I'm still playing it now uh, to the point where I'm meant to be playing other games and I've been putting them down and going back to WWE because the My Rise mode is highly entertaining. It's such a well-polished game. It looks the best it's ever looked. It's played the best it's ever looked. It's weird that you have an entire roster where the majority of wrestlers, it seems, have been uh, now work for different companies because they've had a very uh, odd time with their hiring and firing over the lockdown. But it's still, you know, still with the kind of community that goes behind this and make their own wrestlers and you can kind of, you know, you can keep your roster up to date. You can make brand new shows. I mean, you can make the rival show if you want and put that on your roster and have an AEW show or an Impact Wrestling show and, and just either move your characters over to those different rosters or you can import new characters that other people have made. There's a massive community behind it. It's And it's just a fun, entertaining game. And like I said, it's the best the WWE games have been for... A very long time. I have a question. But is it only because it's actually playable that it's good? Is it relative to the other ones, which were objectively garbage, that it seems so good? I don't. I well, I think that's unfair. I wouldn't say that they're all garbage. I mean, when we when we uh, play the recent ones have been fairly poor. Fairly well, I thinking, buggy, what was it? Twenty sixteen. But... We played. Online. That's quite a long time ago, 2016. Yeah, I know. Like, recent ones, like... But then following that, 2018, I mean, 19. 2017 was good, 2018 was good. Uh, 2020 was the, the big letdown because of all the bugs, and the big problem there was Ukes no longer working with WWE. They're now going off and making AEW's game, and then 2K uh, trying to take over the game in-house and having to pick up from a completely different studio's engine where they've had... Over, a, I think it's over a decade of working with this engine and, and changing it and putting in their own custom code and stuff, and then going, yeah, we're just going to pick that up and use it. Like I once took over a job from uh, an Italian guy whose code was abysmal because, funnily enough, he coded in Italian, and I didn't know what the hell I was doing with it. It, it, it must have felt like that on a much larger scale. <laughs> <laughs> Not sure that's how programming works. Not sure how that works. No, um, well, no, I mean... No, no, I mean like the the, um, the commenting and stuff comment. when they would put 
you know, there was things that they would do that did not make sense. And then when you tried to look at why they did them, that didn't make sense. <laughs> and then you would you would right. look up a translate and that didn't make sense. But anyway, <laughs> uh, okay. similar similar thing, I think, but on a grander scale. Anyway, yeah, I, I think that was the problem. And uh, taking the year off and trying to just start from the ground up, that I think that's really helped them. And again, this is the the best this game has been since 20... I think 2015 is when 2016 okay. came out. So since 2015, okay. this, this has been the best since. I have two questions now, Mr. Colvin. I've saved one up. Yes. But we talked about microtransactions ruining Gran Turismo 7 earlier. Uh, how egregious are the microtransactions in this? Are they trying to sell... You? you mentioned the rosters, but are they trying to sell you more people? Or is it more open to just being able to download stuff? Or how does that work? So they do uh, content packs. So it's regular DLC rules. You can buy a pack of five wrestlers, and they're usually like legends and newcomers and stuff that has been made after the fact of the game being created or uh, been sold in a later point. You can buy a season pass to get all of those, or you can just download them uh, as a whole pack or individually, I believe. It might be as a pack. I'm not 100% on that. There is microtransactions where you can buy currency to unlock things faster in the game or do their weird uh, card mode that I'm not... Which I was unfair about right, as well. Yeah. I, th- I the When I first reviewed it, I spoke about this weird card mode thing and thought it was like a FIFA Ultimate Team. When I was actually playing it, it's really enjoyable and you don't actually have to spend anything and it's not like a whole grind fest. It's um, actually a quick way of getting in-game currency to unlock oh, okay. the wrestlers that are in-game, like Hulk Hogan and stuff. Um, so it was a lot more enjoyable than I realized. Once I finish with my rise, I think I'll be playing that a lot more. Um, but yeah, the there are microtransactions. They're hard to find uh, to buy VC bucks. And I don't know, Like I, I'm sure it's a horrible conversion to what you'd pay for to get the in-game currency, but it is not necessary at all. It's not pushed on you. There's no weird login after this on this day to get this roulette wheel to get you some free bucks oh you might it didn't work you might have to buy some new ones and and uh <laughs> oh, it, uh, 87 pounds it will cost you to unlock one single wrestler and Oops. none of that you know and yeah my other question is right given everything that's happened with the series are you still a fan of Ukes and how excited are you for them working on an AEW game is that something that interests you do you watch AEW? Oh, yeah. Do you still like Ukes regardless of that? Like, what's what's the situation? Like, if you had to only buy one of the two next year, which one would you be buying between a WWE game made by the current devs and a w- AEW game made by Ukes? See, I don't know at this point because um, the AEW game, they've not shown off enough of yet. Just a couple of characters here and there. Um, not really gone into depth on the gameplay I'd have to see how they review uh, before getting to that. I probably err on the side of WWE just because of the community support that's behind it with the the creation suites and stuff. And AEW is a new game, so we don't know how that will go. However, I am more of a fan of AEW than I am of WWE, but I really like the WWE game, and I'm probably more attracted to the WWE game than I am the AEW game at this moment. The likeliness is I'll get both. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that would probably but be the case. But if I had to pick one, I'd, the... I'd probably still go for the next WWE. Uh, okay, if I had okay. to pick one, I'd get both. Yeah. <laughs> if, I had to, if I had to pick one, I'd skip food that week. <laughs> if, if I had to Sophie's Choice this, I would go WWE. However, I am excited for the new game and I, I probably will okay. get both of them anyway. Fair enough. I think that is us discussed. Of our, we, uh, we, are, we are disgusted and we have disgusted it um the, the the games of the year tim's wrong i'm right <laughs> coleman is somewhere in between the Yay. end um so um it's a short show as we said at the top um i'm sure in about six months time you can take great pleasure in in saying how stupid we were at picking these as our games of the year but i remind you it's so far so, so we are far. not time we are not time traveling podcasters. I cannot tell you what games actually ended up getting released this year. Frankly, I can. no one knows. Not even the devs. What none of them. Not is what's not very happen. many other ones from here. Yeah. is the answer yeah, pretty to much. that one really. But. Also, like we we didn't even look at our uh, what we put down at the start of the year. What 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 we think is going to be game of the year. So we we have to, all that to look forward to in six months' yeah. time. That's oh, when we see how wrong fun we we'll were. have. <laughs> the fun we'll have. Uh, that's pretty much it. Um, one thing I will say 
is that you ought to head on over to tpublic.com slash stores slash brb to go get yourself some sweet, sweet merch like Tim's wearing and drinking from. Yes. Not only have we got stuff you can not wear, we've also got stuff you can dr- You can if you soak it in a liquid and then wring it out over your face. I'm not saying it's a good idea. I'm not saying it's going to make stuff taste nice, but technically you can. Yeah. You can also technically wear a mug as well. I mean, I'm technically wearing a mug. because That is, that is one mug. option. Two, you can put it on your head. Yeah. You can mm-hmm. use it as an improvised cricket box if you had to. I'm not sure Just, I can get my fist in it. Yeah. There's an ice. I mean, do you, you can wear it as a glove. <laughs> Thanks. I was nice. I'm always thinking, Hello. you know, I always look at the soundboard and go, we don't have enough ISOs of Tim because he never says anything that's worth uh, ISO. I got uh, one. But I, I get my fist in it. <laughs> nice. That was uh, so, yeah, that's your lot. So, um, thank you for, for tuning in. Make sure you go to www.biggerabarrel.com where you'll find a link to our super awesome Discord. Come in, say hello. You should also go to twitter.com and facebook.com slash Big Red Barrel 2 and say hello there as well. Also, and, uh, leave it. Yes. Oh, sorry, I was just going to sneak in, but I will be at Tabletop Tuesday next ah. Tuesday at Loading Bar in the new location in Stoke Newington. So don't forget, there are details on the world. There will be details on the site by the time you hear this. Good. So you need to check things. That's go Stoke there. Newington, not New Stokington. Yes. Don't go to New Stokington. I'm not even sure there is a New Stokington. Don't go there either. My- we're set. It's like if if Konami didn't have the rights to the place names is what essentially what we're, what we're, what we're doing now. <laughs> anyway, we are going to go, but not before I remind you that I have been Dan. I might have been Tim. Yeah, I've been Chaos. Still Chaos. Mm-hmm. Very predictable. All right, I'll probably just have a flicking session. It's either that'll get your fist in it, isn't it? Let's face it. <laughs> anyway, we're going to go now. Thank you ever so much for listening. And until next time, dear listeners, doodle bye. I'm not sure I can get my fist in it. Burn it down! You and your ears are quite welcome for the podcasting goodness that you just heard. Why not roll on over to BigRedBarrel.com for more podcasts, news, reviews, and videos from the biggest, reddest site on the internet, BigRedBarrel.com. Okay, so if he if his balls are there, okay, uh, yeah, uh, are other yeah. bits of King Kong's... Is there a King Dong? Is there a King Dong? I only have the balls on hearsay. I have not seen any photographic or real in my face evidence.